when you and President Nixon conceived of the bombing of Cambodia, oh. you, you did it in order to interdict. Come on. We have been bombing with drones and all kinds of weapons. Every guerrilla unit that we were opposing, it's been the same in every administration of either party. The consequences in Cambodia were particular. Come on now. No, no, look, no. We're, we're, look, we're particular. I'm, this is a program you're doing because I'm going to be 100 years old. Right. And you're picking a topic of something that happened 60 years ago. You have to know that it was a necessary step. Now the younger generation feels that if they can raise their emotions, they don't have to think. If they think, they won't ask that question. On March 18, 1969, during the Vietnam War, the U.S. secretly began what would become a long and relentless bombing campaign in neighboring Cambodia. Had there been an international criminal tribunal for Cambodia, prosecutors would have had a field day with U.S. President Richard Nixon and his national security advisor and later Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. Establishing genocidal intent with these two would be a cakewalk. On December 9, 1970, Nixon would phone Kissinger to discuss the ongoing bombing of Cambodia. You see, Operation Menu, as it was called, was only an escalation of the bombing. Up to this point, close to 500,000 tons of bombs had already been dropped on Cambodia. Five minutes after getting off of the call, Kissinger called General Alexander Haig to relay the new orders from the president. He wants a massive bombing campaign in Cambodia. He doesn't want to hear anything. It's an order. It's to be done. Anything that flies on anything that moves. You got that? On December 29, 2023, Henry Alfred Kissinger died in his home in Kent, Connecticut, at the age of 100. His death has been met with an outpouring of sympathy and affection from major American news outlets, which may be even more troubling than his legacy. The Washington Post, along with a lengthy obituary, published a short piece on his, quote, carpet bombing of Cambodia. In it, the authors write, Ben Kiernan, a historian at Yale University and a leading scholar of the U.S. legacy in Cambodia, has estimated that around 500,000 tons of U.S. bombs were dropped on Cambodia. Interestingly enough, this figure is from a paper that Kiernan wrote in 1989 called The American Bombardment of Kampuchea, where he cites a figure of 540,000 tons. However, either unbeknownst to the editorial staff at the Washington Post or insidiously omitted, Ben Kiernan actually wrote another, lesser-known article published in the Canadian Walrus magazine, in collaboration with Owen Taylor at the University of Oxford. This article was reporting that in 2000, upon a state visit to Vietnam, President Bill Clinton announced that he would release extensive Air Force data on all American bombings during the Vietnam War from the years 1964 to 1975. The still incomplete database reveals that from October 4, 1965 to August 15, 1973, the United States dropped far more ordnance on Cambodia than was previously believed. 2,756,941 tons worth. To put 2,756,941 tons into perspective, the Allies dropped just over 2 million tons of bombs during all of World War II. Cambodia may be the most heavily bombed country in history. Moreover, the two announced, the data released by Clinton shows the total payload dropped during these years to be nearly five times greater than the generally accepted figure. Nick Terse, author of Kill Anything That Moves, The Real American War in Vietnam, has clearly been prepared to write Kissinger's obit for years. Terse can appropriately be called America's leading expert, if not a foremost expert worldwide, on American war crimes during the Vietnam War. 
His book is probably the only one of its kind, solely dedicated to chronologizing these crimes in detail. Kissinger helped to prolong the Vietnam War and expand the conflict into neutral Cambodia, facilitated genocides in Cambodia, East Timor, and Bangladesh, accelerated civil wars in Southern Africa, and supported coups and death squads throughout Latin America. He had the blood of at least three million people on his hands, according to his biographer Greg Grandin. He quotes Reed Brody, who worked on the Pinochet case in the UK. Few people have had a hand in as much death and destruction, as much human suffering in so many places around the world as Henry Kissinger. Kissinger was born in Germany, born in the Bavarian town of Firth in 1923. He was actually born Heinz. At 15, his family escaped the Holocaust, although at least 13 of their relatives would perish in concentration camps. In the U.S., he became Henry. Henry was withdrawn and bookish. In 1943, he was drafted into the army and went on to lead raids in Gestapo houses, earning himself a Bronze Star. He attended Harvard University, where he wrote a lengthy doctoral dissertation called A World Restored, about European diplomacy following the fall of Napoleon. From Harvard, he was placed in an elite study group at the Council on Foreign Relations studying nuclear policy. His work, Nuclear Weapons and Foreign Policy, gave him cachet at Harvard and in foreign policy circles. He naturally became a consultant to the Kennedy and later the Johnson administrations. In 1968, he was offered a job in the Nixon administration. To his admirers, he was the brilliant architect of Pax Americana, the chess grandmaster. To his detractors, and even some friends and former employees, he was vain, conspiratorial, arrogant, and short-tempered, a man capable of praising a top aide as indispensable while ordering the FBI to illegally tap his home phones to see if he was leaking to the press. He was lauded for foreign policy successes. As the impresario of Nixon's historic opening to China, and as the theoretician of detente with the Soviet Union, Dr. Kissinger earned much of the credit for seismic policy shifts that redirected the course of world affairs. With his German accent, incisive wit, owlish looks, and zest for socializing in Hollywood and dating movie stars, he was instantly recognized all over the world, in stark contrast to most of his understated predecessors. Foreign policy expert Alfred W. McCoy of the University of Wisconsin-Madison has long been unimpressed by his record, writing in 2017, Henry Kissinger was as inept as he was ruthless. Extending the Vietnam War by seven bloody years to mask his diplomatic failure, turning East Timor over to Indonesia for decades of slaughter until its inevitable independence, cratering U.S. credibility in Latin America by backing a murderous military dictatorship in Chile, and mismanaging Moscow in ways that helped extend the Cold War by 15 years, Kissinger's career, as international law specialist Richard Falk observed, has been marked by his extraordinary capacity to be repeatedly wrong about almost every major foreign policy decision made by the U.S. government over the course of the last half century. It appears Kissinger's record in Bangladesh was too grave for the New York Times to ignore, as the Washington Post did. Perhaps the most egregious episode came in the signals to Pakistan that it was free to deal with Bengalis in East Pakistan as it saw fit. Indeed, when Pakistan's U.S.-backed military was waging a genocidal war in East Pakistan, now Bangladesh, in 1971, he and Nixon not only ignored pleas from the American consulate in East Pakistan to stop the massacre, but they approved weapon shipments to Pakistan, including the apparent illegal transfer of 10 fighter bombers from Jordan. The human cost was horrific. At least 300,000 people were killed in East Pakistan, and 10 million refugees were driven into India. They also add East Timor to his list of dastardly deeds, a country the Washington Post did not even name a single time. He and President Ford approved Indonesia's invasion of East Timor in December 1975 leading to a disastrous 24-year occupation by a U.S.-backed military. Declassified documents released in 2001 by the National Security Archive indicate that Ford and Mr. Kissinger knew of the invasion plans months in advance 
and were aware that the use of American arms would violate U.S. law. I know what the law is, he said. They reported that more than 100,000 East Timorese were killed or starved to death. What they don't say is that that is a conservative estimate, and the number could be as high as 180,000, or up to a quarter of the entire population. They also don't mention that, according to the UN's Truth Commission set up after the Indonesian withdrawal, that mass starvation was used as a weapon of war. Of course, one has to mention the notorious Operation Condor, unmentioned by the New York Times or the Washington Post, but like I said, Nick Terse was prepared. You did a great service to the West in overthrowing Allende, Kissinger later told General Augusto Pinochet, the leader of the military junta that went on to kill thousands of Chileans. In Argentina, Kissinger gave another green light, this time to a terror campaign of torture, forced disappearances, and murder by a military junta that overthrew President Isabel Perón. During a June 1976 meeting, Kissinger told the junta's foreign minister, if there are things that have to be done, you should do them quickly. The so-called dirty war that followed would claim the lives of an estimated 30,000 Argentine civilians. Terse reminds us that Kissinger stoked a war in Angola and prolonged apartheid in South Africa. In the Middle East, he sold out the Kurds in Iraq. After Washington, Kissinger became wealthy through founding a consulting firm, Kissinger Associates. Terse writes, the firm leveraged Kissinger's reputation and contacts to help huge multinational corporations, banks, and financial institutions, including American Express, Anheuser-Busch, Coca-Cola, Heinz, Fiat, Volvo, Ericsson, and Daewoo, broker deals with governments. The New York Times put it like so. When Disney sought to navigate the Chinese leadership to build a $5.5 billion park in Shanghai, Mr. Kissinger got the call. Kissinger also continued to write policy recommendations and articles, and advised every single president from Nixon onwards. Indeed, current Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said upon Kissinger's death that he had sought counsel from the former diplomatic chief many times, including most recently about a month ago. Those who may be dismayed at how long Kissinger was able to live may have some solace in the fact that a mind that could unleash such hideous man-made horrors onto untold millions of people throughout the world and do so without hesitation or apology will never speak or advise another sitting U.S. official for the rest of time. And we can all breathe a deep sigh of relief for that. <laughs>